I got to Vietnam, and I believe it was called uh, Long Ben Air Base at Benoit. Anywhere, anyway, it was near Saigon, which is Ho Chi Minh City now, I think. Uh, but anyway, um, from there, they shipped me north to Camp Holloway in Pleiku, Vietnam, which was near the Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam tri-border, which happened to be right near the Ho Chi Minh Trail, which was a major supply route of the North Vietnamese Army as they came down. And uh, so Camp Holloway had the distinction of being called Rocket City a lot of the time because apparently they were rocketed more than any other um, camp over there. And uh, and I was assigned to the 119th uh, Assault Helicopter Company out of the 50s, part of the 52nd Combat uh, aviation battalion or 52nd cab and with the slit the true deployment drivers or pilots were called slick they were called slicks there were the uh one h huey and the there was a gun platoon and they flew the uh one c or commonly affectionately known as the charlie model and that was the first gun, Huey gun platform that the U.S. Army had developed. The Cobra was in existence at that time, but there wasn't nearly as many of them over there, and that came later. And uh, the there were two slick platoons, as I recall, and one gun platoon. Our slick drivers were called alligators, and the guns were called crocodiles or crocs. After I flew slicks for about two and a half months going into these holes in the jungle that to me looked microscopic, that you could, I don't see how you could get a, a, thimble, a sewing thimble in, let alone a helicopter. Uh, that's what we were expected to do, and it was triple canopy jungle a lot of times, and it was in mountains. There's no place to put it down if the engine failed, and there was a whole bunch of people on the ground that had that really liked to shoot at you and try to kill you. <laughs> and what they would do is you'd come in with, let's say, say a LERP team, a long-range reconnaissance patrol, and their job was to see and not be seen, hear and not be heard. It, to gather intelligence on where enemy movement was. Well, you'd put the, them in these, try to be surreptitious about it, but you'd have to bring the aircraft to a hover, and sometimes the trees may have been 100 feet tall, and it was triple canopy, like one growth, two growths, three growths, and barely enough room to get it down. And the crew chief and the gunner were telling you, uh, Two feet clearance on the left, sir. Don't come any more until tail rotor. And the other guy on the right would say, there's no more room over here, sir. And you looked out and it looks like the blades were going to hit the trees in the front. And it was quite scary at first. And uh, uh, my first mission was quite memorable. And... Uh, I got introduced in one mission to horribly wounded and, and soldiers, uh, close encounters with mortars, <laughs> and the zing of bullets flying through the aircraft. And I was a kid from Southern Illinois who had been a college student. It was a completely different world. It was sensory overload your brain couldn't process it at first but anyway what they would do is it is since you were loaded and in the mountains they'd get halfway down 
you'd get halfway down the old the landing zone and if the if the enemy was there they wouldn't make themselves known until about that point and then they'd get you in a 10 o'clock two o'clock crossfire or a four six so they would never wind up shooting each other if the if the aircraft got that low and you were just a sitting duck I remember feeling like there was a huge bullseye painted on the chopper, and uh, it was quite a it was quite a fee, uh, uh, an honor for any guy to get a helicopter. I mean, that was a big prize, landing a big fish. But you had to sit there and just watch through the chin bubble, and hope that you didn't get your head blown off or that hit the engine or some control or something and keep going down because you they knew that you did not have the power to get out of that descent and pull up without running out a left pedal and spinning it and crashing and then you'd be barbecue for them on the ground that night for supper so as soon as they got i've seen lerps jump from 15 20 feet it seemed like and if you think about it, there's a whole bunch of guys down there with AK-47s on full automatic, and they thought it was safer <laughs> to jump down there right in front of those people than it was to be on that helicopter, <laughs> to give you an idea. But when you got rid of the LERP team, then you had the power, and then you started pulling out, and you hoped to hell you got out of there. That didn't happen every time or all the time, but you never knew when it was going to happen. And so I decided, uh, after about two and a half months of that, I got an invitation to join the Crocs, the gun platoon. And there was a, there were a great bunch of guys. All of them were. There were great pilots and the slicks on the guns. And uh, to a man, I, I mean, they were just, you formed incredibly strong bonds in combat. And uh, so I decided I wanted to shoot back. So when they offered me, uh, position of the Crocs when uh, a fellow that we called Elmer Fudd, I think it was, went home. Um, everybody had nicknames. And uh, I jumped at it and went there because I wanted to shoot back. And that was a completely different mission. That's when you went out and and really got a lot of Americans home alive. And that became our mission. Uh, we were all confused about the the American mission. What was it? I mean, what was the domino theory about all of Southeast Asia was going to fall? And that didn't appear, didn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense to us. But as pilots, we had to have some kind of cohesive um, uh mission a job that we felt important that was meaningful and, and we had meetings at night and i got up one night at one of the meetings and everybody's griping about the war and i said i tell you what guys why don't we make it our mission and we lost guys by then and you'd lost close friends and that was really hard. And um, I said, why don't we make it our mission to get... There's a lot of guys out there in the field right now with their boots rotting off their feet, with leeches crawling all over them. They want to be here less than we do. So let's get as many of them home as we can. So they can have a wife and a family and kids and grandchildren. And uh, that became our mission of the Crocs of the 119th. And I think everybody felt better about that then because we were there for a real purpose then. <laughs>